guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you're looking for a friendly, helpful vermiculture community, you are in the right place. Today, we're going to do the first check-in on my new ENC wedge system. And this will let you know about what to expect in the event that you start your own bin the way that I have today. If you want to go back and watch the video before this where we actually did make this, I will link that above. Cliff Notes version is we started with two... 10 gallon bins that had been running for a couple of months and then I added five gallons of bedding and a gallon of moldy fruit to get this thing started. It's been almost four weeks so let's take a look at what these three pounds of European night crawlers in this 27 gallon system have done with their time that I've given them. Okay so let's let's first look here at the the end that will be our finished end and I'm seeing a lot of the breeders here still it does appear to be a little dry for some reason which is weird because it's 60% oops 60% humidity in this bin which is a lot or it's 60% humidity in this basement which is a lot it has been more rain in a July than I ever remember having. I have no idea. When I first moved here, you could pretty much count on never having to mow your grass in July. It all just turned brown and you got a reprieve until September. Uh, not anymore. We are getting so much rain here. We've had, I don't know, um, we got five inches over the course of one weekend recently, and so I, yeah, I don't even know what to do about it. I mean, I haven't had to hardly water the garden at all, but it also means that the worm bins are not going to generally dry out because of the humidity. So that's why I'm kind of like, it's kind of weird. Maybe it's just because it's a high percentage of bedding right now. I'm not sure. Okay, so... We're getting to the area where this was new bedding and new food. Let's see what we've got. Three pounds of worms can do quite a bit. And when they're at this part of a system's life, they really do crank out all of the cocoons that they can get uh, because the volume can support way more than three pounds of worms. So they feel more than comfortable to go ahead and breed like crazy. Let's take a closer look at the feeding end of the bed. Okay, well I'll move over some of this dry paper and see what the feeding zone looks like right now. Put in about a gallon of food. I'm seeing a lot of worms here. But other than those pieces of pineapple that were left, I'm not seeing a whole lot of food. And of course, I put this dry paper down here to absorb any of the excess moisture that was coming out of that food that we gave them last time. And it appears that it did its job, and all of the food is gone. So these worms are going much faster than I really anticipated them to go. So let's have a look and see if we can get them fed up. We'll use most of this bedding here as a base and then we'll cover up with the other dry bedding. Okay, they're going to get a nice cucumber, some papaya flesh, um, a potato, which we're gonna cover up really well because that can go horribly south. More papaya. I know it looks like squash, but it's actually papaya. You can see by these little seeds here. I have grown papaya trees in my bin, but I don't remember quite honestly if they had been frozen or not. All of this has been frozen. A couple of avocado peels. You know, that actually might be a squash peel. Nope. It's actually the papaya. We've got a little bit of kale stems, a little bit more of the avocado, 
some avocado pits. And hopefully this big of a feeding will be enough to get them by. The temperatures have been very, very warm. Staying about 80 Fahrenheit in the basement here. So these particular worms still work pretty well when it comes to temperatures that high. Now, so after a one month check-in, I'm saying this bin is doing very well. Had I not started with bedding that was already a little in process, we might have seen things a little differently. I still think it'll probably be another four months before we can get a harvest out of this, but I believe that it is cycling just fine. Let's go look at the original European Nightcrawlers and see what they're doing. Kind of a nice compare and contrast between a bin that was just started and a bin that's been running for over a year. Okay, hang on. Okay, so here we are at the original European Nightcrawler bin and it is dang damp. Look at that. I don't know. I'm probably not going to try and get a harvest out of this. There's just way too many worms at this finish end. And I think that's probably more due to the excessive moisture than it is, um, you know, this possibility of there still being a lot of food in here. I could be wrong. Worms will generally migrate to some place that is more wet, even if it does not have, you know, extra food. They appreciate the moisture that much that they will go there over, you know, the desire to see food. From what I understand, worms like to reproduce in very, very high moisture environments, up to 80%. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's 80%. And looks like the worms are actually pretty well distributed throughout this. And I think the moisture is pretty well distributed. So we're going to go ahead and pile that up and hopefully... If it ever dries out, then we will get a harvest, you know, in the future. I don't know if we're going to get a worm ball. Last time we had a couple of avocados, but I don't... I don't know if I think we're going to see one this week. You see how beautiful the castings are. As soon as this does start drying out... I'll be able to get a very, very good harvest. Last time I think we harvested about three or four gallons. So that was actually really good for one harvest for this bin. It is a lot smaller than blue. It, well, it's half the size of blue. Uh, let's see, pumpkin stem from several years ago. The top part here seems to be getting squishy, but the bottom, not so much. All right, let's switch around. Let's look at the business end of this bin. Let me know in the comments below if you can really tell the difference between this one and the bin that we just looked at that was brand new. To me, I can tell a lot of difference between the, the texture of the castings due to really just there being that much more worms in this bin. A lot of small ones, big ones, medium-sized ones. The little ones seem to get into every nook and cranny and help move things forward, and the big ones just plow through anything that's moldy right away. Also, I think the ecosystem in here is much more developed, and so that is why the food cycles faster in an older bin, just because you've got all the springtails and the mites and roly-polies and, and all of that business in high numbers in the bin. You can just see the top here is pure castings, and this is the part that is the newest. So we're going to keep flipping, see if we find any worm balls. Right now it's just looking like we're finding avocado pits and worms, but everything looks really well cycled. I don't see a lot of the bedding or anything like that. Now we had some corn cobs in here. I was hoping to get some kind of a worm ball out of that. They do love their corn cobs. I actually think it's quite a bit of entertainment value for them. And you might be thinking, and you're just making them seem more like people. But I think they really do put, um, I don't know, a priority over crawling in and out of things. 
I mean, why else would they do it? it? Must serve some sort of purpose. But in the comments below, do you think the worms enjoy certain kinds of environments? Not just wet versus not wet, but if they have the ability to, you know, get in between sticks and in corn cobs, I think they must enjoy it. It must serve some purpose to them. So not a proper worm ball. <clears throat> there we go. We got an avocado. Good worms. So I'm going to put all of this food down in the bottom here. And then I'm going to give them a little boost of bedding. And some more food. These guys also do not have pretty much any food left over. I should have brought down more bedding if I realized it was this well worked over. All right, let's take a closer look. This is all of our leftovers, our corn cobs, our avocado pits, everything's right down here where it can get all of the juices of the new food and that will hopefully soak in and then make it go faster when the worms want to eat it. There we go. That is today's feeding. We've got some bananas, more avocado, and just a lot of vegetable bits. Let's get them their bedding. I might actually bring down more bedding for them later. I'm not sure that's going to be enough. They really don't have a whole lot of spare bedding to uh, move their population into. But if you like this video about the side-by-side -side European night crawlers, I do have a playlist for the European night crawlers right over here. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video right over here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.